natural breeze Funny how a week ago I could only dream On the comeback to the moment Of my side touch tasting loud And I'm screaming for an immature revival Hey guys, welcome to Surf and Show. I'm Noel Salas and today's surfboard review is on the Sci-Fi 2.0 by Slater Designs. Now I've got two stock boards. I've got a 5.5 coming in at 24.6 liters and then I have the 5.6 at 26 liters. Now as a reference for you guys, I shot every wave on the 5.5 in the gray and white wetsuit. That will help you to know which board's which. This is gonna be a great review, so sit back, get your favorite drink, enjoy the show. Now as we dive into the Sci-Fi 2.0 changes, I wanna first recommend that you watch the original sci-fi re review we did because it'll really help and answer a lot of questions you might have. That original sci-fi, I looked at the Cymatic, the SKX, and the Omni and kind of talked about my experience with all those different designs because it's, those boards are still relevant today. Now we're looking at the sci-fi 2.0 and what its changes are from the original sci-fi, which I will really think that you'll be able to see the differences in my surfing from the original to this particular model. But let's look at the changes right off the bat. On the 2.0, its wide point is a little forward from center. Now, if I put this board on the ground, it's pretty subtle. I don't see a dramatic wide point front from center. So the nose still has that performance look to it. Usually when I see wide point front from center, it's gonna wanna carve better than pivot. This board did both real well. Now, the, one of the main reasons for adding that wide point, moving it forward a little bit, is because they're taking an inch off in length. In the original sci-fi review, I had the 5.7 and the 5.6. Here we have the 5.6 and the 5.5. And the original sci-fi, I liked the 5.6 better, even though it had a lot less leaders for me in flotation. But because of the parallel outline, I really felt like it needed to be shorter to fit in a tight transition. So on like a three foot wave, the 5.7 was feeling too long on the original sci-fi. The 5.6 felt good, but I had to work harder in my paddling. So they make that one inch shorter in length and the 5.6 is money. Now I had fun on both sizes and I felt like both floated me fine, but in the end, I'll take more leaders and make it easier to catch waves as long as I'm getting quality performance in the pocket without hesitation from turn to turn. Now I wanna talk about the changes of the 2.0 in the tail. So they pulled it in, they made it narrower, and they've added tail rocker, which matches the whole idea and concept behind it being an inch shorter in length. They're taking this board from my perspective and they're putting it into the high performance shortboard category. Firewire website says three to eight foot, is the sweet spot wave range for this board, and I agree. But let's talk about the change real quick. When we pull in the tail, we make it narrower and we add tail rocker, we're gonna get more traction off the bottom and more precision in the pocket. And that's exactly how it felt. Now if we take a three foot wave that's hollow and punchy, or even a two foot wave, this shorter length with his parallel outline and the changes in the tail, you're gonna be stoked it's gonna outperform the original sci-fi. But let's take a two foot wave that's got maybe a slopey and it's kind of flat and it doesn't ever really get round. I really felt like the original sci-fi because it has a wider tail, so more surface area and less tail rocker, it's carrying more glide and speed down the line. I'll say this, if I put this particular model, the 2.0, with its rocker and pulled in tail, and I apply more pressure on my bottom turns, it's gonna give me more drive through my turns. But as soon as I take this board and put it inside the three feet under range, and it's weak and mushy, this board's gonna struggle and your original sci-fi is gonna feel faster. Now I wanna talk about the fins I chose. And after writing a number of Tomo's different designs, all having that quad inside single concave, I have a tendency to struggle with a large fin that has a lot of rake. So right off the bat, I started with a medium rake fin. Now this is by Naked Viking Surf, 
It's called the AMC. A bit more like the Almeric template. So it's got a, a bit of rake to it. So it's gonna be good and carving and driving through my turns. Now, this is what they call the Apex series. And it's a fiberglass fin with an epoxy resin instead of a polyester resin. So I'm gonna get consistency and predictability in my turns and it's gonna feel solid underfoot. Now, that's why I started as a thruster. Then I wanted to put a large fin in there, and to be honest with you guys, I had to go back to the original sci-fi review and refresh my memory of what went good in that board. And I really liked a more pivotal fin. So I put in the Naked Viking Surf Peregrine fin, which is a lot more upright, and it's a large, and I was getting a little bit more speed and drive through turns because it has a larger base. Now. For the more pivotal upright, I felt like I just got it in, up in the lip faster. It kept it even quicker rail to rail than maybe that of the rake set, right? Now, I rode both boards as thruster, and that was my favorite on the 2.0. But we did put it through the paces with a quad set. So I just took out the center fin, and I put in the Pizel new quad rears. Now, this is a flat foil fin. It's size medium and this is pretty upright. So it's probably my favorite quad rears right now because it is a flat foil. Most others that I like are an 80-20, right? So it has a, it's not a complete flat foil inside. So I really like this fin, it's honeycomb, and it was a great combination with the Peregrine keeping the board nice and pivotal in the pocket. Now, I did notice a little bit more speed, very little, not enough to sacrifice the pivot I was getting with a thruster. Now, under the three feet, I thought, could we get a little bit more speed? And I know this is experimental for all of us, so I went with a Twin Plus trailer set, and I put in the AMT, stands for Almeric Twins. Now, this fin's so upright, and there's so much rocker, and the tail's so pulled in, I felt like the board was too loose. Still got a couple good turns, and I really felt like for you guys out there that like to experiment with fins like I do, it's kind of fun, put in the Twin Plus trailer, and give it a go. But I think if I were to do it again, I'd go with the T1s because it has more rake, it'll tone it down, I'll get a little bit more speed and have more fun in the two to three foot range if I wanna push this board in smaller surf. So let's look at some waves together. These first few waves, two to three feet, kind of slopey. You can see boards nice rail to rail. Nothing super trick, good flow between turns, but the board looks a tad slow to me. Right, and this is first couple waves where I was with a quad. Now as we get the right and you get this wave with a little bit of line to it, it projects well. Nice turn right there, good spray. Getting the tail loose. Now the wave a little bit steeper right here and you look at the wave, height is the same, but the steeper the wave, the board starts to shine. Nice floater right there, good top turn. Watch the wave go flat. Nice little roundhouse right there and watch the flow, it starts to take off again. So you put the board on rail and it will squirt with speed and finish it strong down the line. But you get this board in overhead surf, nice little turn under the lip right there, and that's when it really starts to shine bright. Good turn right here, getting that tail free, able to project and finish well. So let's look at the 5.5. Five. Smaller wave, working a little bit harder, decent first turn, Second turn's better, and you can see I could use all that one inch more in rail line just to give me something to push off of. Here's a little left, coming off the bottom from behind. That was okay, but this nice little reverse right here. The 5.5, five, I could really put it where I wanted and be real precise, especially on this bigger wave. Quick check turn, right into a floater, right into a bottom turn, finishing it well with good flow. This little left, watch the pop out of the LFT. Just great projection through turns. This left's just beautiful. Nice first turn, no hesitation, right into that top turn. Able to come around and finish strong. So a few last thoughts. I really like the Sci-Fi 2.0 as a high performance shortboard and I like the stock dimensions at 5.6 coming in at 26 liters where most manufacturers will have a stock high performance shortboard coming in at 5'9", 5'10", in length, and I find myself grabbing those boards less often because they're too long. So for me, the stock dimensions on the Sci-Fi 2.0 are spot on. 
Now, if you want to learn more about the LFT construction, head over to the Firewire website. And for those of you that want a little more info on the bottom contours that Tom will calls the quad inside single concave, check out the Hydra Short review. He breaks it down real well. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review on the Sci-Fi 2.0 by Slater Designs. I highly recommend it as a high performance shortboard for intermediate all the way to pro level surfers in three to eight foot surf. Hey, if you like the show, subscribe. If you like the content, give us a thumbs up. Special shout out thanks to Kelly Slater for sending these boards down for review. Until next time, we'll see you in the water. Bye-bye.